All right, we have gone from the great outdoors to the great indoors. And this is how the process works. You've got your different meat groups that you cut out of that mm -hmm. animal sitting right here. You didn't hide those inside tenderloins on me, did you? They're in the bucket. I'll use those okay. later. Okay, I was just checking. <laughs> now you got some materials out here too. You got the bowls and you got the, mm -hmm. you got some cookie sheets and some freezer paper. Very simple. Uh, like we said before, you use your same boning knife. You'll need some freezer paper. You can buy freezer tape, but scotch tape works fine. I mean, you don't, you know, it's just an added expense. Remember, we're doing this at home, so, you know, some pans, uh, a cutting board. We got a little wooden cutting board, it's fine. Um, some pans, some bowls. You'll want a bowl for trim meat, and I usually have a bowl for scrap. You can use a trash can. But, uh, and your grinder. Yeah, your grinder. For hammer. That's optional. There's, you know, a lot of people have those things on the wall, and they still work fine. The ones you just yeah, they're the old hand <laughs> cranks. You're only doing one deer. That's how I started. That was just one I had from a wall somewhere. It worked fine. Now explain to us. These are the major groups you cut off the deer. Tell us what each one is. This is uh, one piece of each. You've got your sirloin tip. You got your back loin. You got your front shoulder, which you can make into shoulder roast, but I usually bone it out for burger meat. And then you have your back ham section, which has your top round, your bottom round your sirloin, and your eye. And we're going to divide all these up, trim them out so everybody knows. That's all you need to worry about. Once you've got this, your burger meat is the extra trim you took off the animal. Once you learn these four pieces, you know how to process it here. That's all it takes. This is your top round. This is really kind of neat. If you take this piece, you'll notice that there's extra pieces. Whenever you're doing this, most of the pieces you'll be working with, if you have trouble, just feel into the meat and you'll find where it's something is connected. If you see this piece has a piece surrounding it, just pull it off a little bit, go to the front and back of it, and you're wanting to trim this out kind of like a football. You'll just trim that outside piece off. And this piece is kind of grainy throughout it, but we'll cut this into steaks. Pretty good steaks, actually. Yes, there, and I can't believe so many people just have most of this ground up in mm -hmm. hamburger. Now, I like deer hamburger, but... Cause... Now, this piece we'll use for burger. We'll trim all that up when we're done, and we'll use that for burger. Now, if you turn it around, you'll see a couple little extra pieces, and on these pieces, it's good to square up the ends. Move that. Square up both ends. On this particular piece, the silver seam you see here, it's really... You can't really remove it without destroying this whole piece. If you can see underneath, you can see where it's kind of connected. What we're going to do is butterfly this into steaks. When you butterfly, you go almost all the way through, and then you step over the same amount and you cut all the way through. It's really super simple. I'm going to cut these thick, almost to the board, pull back up, step over, all the way to the board and just lay them open. Look what a good piece of meat. I personally like these thicker. You can, when you're doing this meat, that's a nice thing. If you wanted to, you could leave this hole and decide later on when you defrosted it, how you wanted it. Then you could cut it or cook it as a roast. Step over, cut all the way through. And you usually get about three pieces out of each of them. Now, how do you like to fix this, just out of curiosity, while you're cutting it? I like on a charcoal grill with real butter on it, a little seasoning just like a steak. But the trick is when you put real butter on it, you let it drip to the coals, and as that real butter is burning, the fats from the butter flavor it just like regular steak meat. And I think it's wonderful. <laughs> just use a couple extra kitchen pans or whatever you have. Set those aside. That's all you need to know for that part. Now, that, again, that's what was that cut of meat? That's your sirloin tip. Gotcha. And then you, have, you actually have a sirloin here connected to your back ham section. We're going to do that last. Next, let's go to the back loin. It's equally as easy. Right there, everything looks kind of messy. You'll notice there's a piece of neck meat attached to the bottom. This is like two pieces here together, and you'll see where the back of it has a connector kind of touching onto it, and what you want to do well, we've already stripped most of it away on this one. Just pull it off. That's an extra piece of burger meat. And then this back section here. You, you'll see that it's just kind of barely attached. Usually when you pull them out, we kind of trimmed it on the other part of the video, but all that will just kind of pull off. 
Now very few times are you going to have a great big long cutting board, so take it and half it. Set one side aside. Now this is what we refer to as silver seam. And then you'll see a little bit of extra fat on it. What we're going to do is start by cutting all that away and trimming it out. When we're done, we want just nice red shiny meat. Now you can get super picky with this. When you're using your knife, keep it good and flat and just kind of, just like you were flaying a fish. And get off all those little shiny pieces of silver seam. Now this is what are affectionately known as the back straps. Mm -hmm. If you've ever had back straps cut into chops uh, and you possibly haven't had it done like this, I would ask your butcher or do it yourself. Now it's the same thing the other side. You want to just fillet all that off. You can trim that up later and get a little extra burger meat out of it. Run your knife right under the tip. That's one thing about choosing a knife. You want something with a nice little sharp tip. Just slide it under there, keep it kind of curled up. It's kind of elastic like mm -hmm. material. So very, very tough. It's very strong. And when you get ready to make your burger meat, you can actually turn it over. You know how you pull a, mm -hmm. the flay off of a fish? How about that? And you can actually save that if you want. Or make it in stir fry. <laughs> That's the whole of the show right there. <laughs> yeah. I'm not much of a cook, actually. I just, the steaks on the grill is fine with me. Now, this was a medium sized dough and pretty good loin for a medium sized dough. Now, that is some excellent. Just a little extra little piece here. Mm -hmm. Get all those off. What will happen is you'll have a really good piece of meat and you'll be chewing along. And then all of a sudden you'll hit something like gristle. And uh, it's, it's really not that pleasurable. A couple extra little pieces. This is the part that makes it so much tastier is taking the time to do this. See like a little piece there? Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're ready. You can choose to leave it whole or fillet it or butterfly. That's what I like to do is butterfly. It's the same mm -hmm. process you use. Same before. process. Just almost all the way through. And all the way through. Almost and all. Almost and all. Just work your way down. A little corner piece, put it down there. And then just open them up. Some will be thinner than the others. A good piece of meat right there. You get a big buck and they'll be usually about twice this size. How about that? And that's one half of your loin. Set those aside. You know, I think, Sam, watching you do this, I think a lot of people, they don't realize what wonderful cuts of meat there are in here. If you take your time and you, and, and mm -hmm. you, you go about this process, it just takes a little bit of time. But the taste, I have never, and you've, you've helped me clean a few like this, I've never opened up a package of meat that you've cut for me and had any bad taste at all. It's, it's like the best beef in the world. It's it, got its, it's own amazing. taste, but it's, it's, not a, it's not a wild or gamey taste at all. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. The first packages I ever got from someone, uh, you know, I wasn't a hunter yet. I wasn't deer, a deer hunter yet. And I had someone give me some. And um, after the first package, I threw it out. <laughs> it was, I don't know how old it was, but. Because they didn't cut it right. Well, it was, it was very gamey and it was full of bone and it had been band sawed and mm -hmm. I don't know the particulars of it, but it wasn't very good. <laughs> now you see on this one, on the end of your loin, you're going to have kind of a bigger overlapping area on this piece of muscle here where it's attached. So you want to get that, you want to get under that. If you don't, you'll hit the other part of the silver seam. You can always save it for a burger. You want to get as much silver seam out of the burger too as you mm -hmm. want, as you can. But <clears throat> you know, some people, uh, you know, deer meat is so lean, you have an option to actually throw some fat or mm -hmm. into your actual burger. Some people choose to do that. I put in, I put in suet. You can get suet from most of your local butchers. Just ask them. Uh, I have. Uh, 
I have put in as much, as little as 10%, as much as 40%. And I do think I like it with a burger somewhere around 40%. Mm -hmm. And that's optional, and I've eaten it without any. I like mm -hmm. it. It's just, again, lean. Yeah, if you're going to make chili, I like it without. You know, a lot of people these days, everybody's health conscious, and it's hard to find foods where you can get a high protein content without the fat. Mm -hmm. And so well, this, this is, is certainly one way to, you know, doctors recommend this to mm -hmm. people who can't have a lot of grease in their diet. And you can buy it from the store, but like you said, it's quite expensive. It sure is. Uh, I think the department offers a really good price on uh, deer tags. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the better values in Kentucky. Well, that's for sure. What we got next, then? Okay. The next, let's go to the shoulder. All right. Now, like I said, you can make this into a roast, but over the years I've found it was a little bit extra trouble, so now I just bone it out for my burger meat. Set it so it's facing up. You'll see the blade bone is right there on top. You can see the bone right there. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is we're going to take all this off. I'm going to remove a little bit of the extra material here. Now this is one of those pieces you can't get off all the silver seam because it's uh, like a roast. It has a bunch of connecting pieces throughout it. And actually most of the, most of the trimming we'll do on it will be done after it's in the burger bowl. Mm -hmm. So go up to here behind the knuckle. Go into the bone, you'll feel the bone, and we're going to debone it just like we did the leg out on the deer. Just follow the bone. Mm -hmm. Go in from the front of the knuckle. Using the tip of your knife. Just keep freeing it up. Now one thing about this process is it works equally as well on elk. Um, most any of your, you know, big game animals. So if you're ever out west and you can't get your meat to the freezer, you can do all this and a whole elk will fit in a cooler. You know, it's, you have to, you have to check your game laws, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, follow that blade bone. What we've done is there's two sides of it. And then once you get off one side of it, you're gonna fillet that down to the bone. And I'm just flattening out the knife. It's kind of the same way you did the back straps. Mm -hmm. Scoop it out. The idea is to get the bone out of there and leave all the meat attached. And again, most of, most of the front shoulder meat goes to hamburger. Mm -hmm. But this, this section we're taking off, I used to tie them together. And people like to make roast out of them. Hmm. But that's the nice thing about doing it this way. You can do what you want. I mean. Once you're handling it, it's just a matter of how much time you want to take. Okay. I got one set off. And like I said, since we're using it for burger, beauty is not in, you know, not a question here. Now, you know something we ought to mention while we're doing this right here? There are a lot of people, and I don't, I don't know the exact amount, but I heard as many as two million people are fed by Hunters for the Hungry. Mm -hmm. okay. An incredible program. How does that work, Sam, if somebody wants to? Well, um, you can, I'm not sure exactly how they do it, but I know you can go on the internet and look up the, the Hunter for the Hungry to give donations. I think it's $25 donation usually pays for a butcher to debone the animal and make it into burger meat, and then they send that to uh, the people that need it. But $25 donation to process a whole deer, I think that's a really good deal. So if you know a butcher that's involved in it, definitely, you know, if you're, if you're not in the hunting sports, um, you know, make the donation just to help a family. Now all we're doing here is following the bone, nothing special. And all this will be trimmed up for our burger meat. Get the other side of... So you're just basically cutting the meat away from the bone here. That's all we're doing. Nothing fancy. You see there what's left there is bone. It's all bone. We have a little bit attached to the end here. The pieces you're seeing are, you know, they're very, very small. The what's left, we got the bulk of it in the first cut. You'll have a little bit around the end. Now, one rule I like to go by is wherever I cut through the bone, I stay away from it. Because mm. I, I just, it just makes me feel better. So I'll take a little bit of this off. I leave a couple inches. Now, like I said, any of these lower leg muscles, boy, they're tough. 
you can grind them up and put them in your sausage meat and all that, but they will be a lot tougher. I think a lot of people will choose to, if they've got a grinder like that, they'll even run them through twice. Mm -hmm. And then for what bones are left, you know, some people do boil them up and freeze them for their, for their dogs. You know, as a treat later on in the winter. Mm -hmm. so, you, so that doesn't even have to be wasted right. if you want to. Well, another bite of dust. What's coming up next? Okay, the, the last piece is the bottom ham section. And it is the more difficult. But hopefully I can explain it so that you'll be able to get it right the very first time. You can tell where the tail was. This was the rear of the deer. This was the part toward the loin. And you can see how there's a rounded piece. That's going to be our sirloin. Just lay it over so that it's opened up to where the bone was. And you can see how it's starting to open by itself. All we're going to do is help it. There's three pieces here we're going to get from this main middle section. Right there. Just take your hands, take your knife, start opening it up, and you'll see little opening pieces. I tell people when they look at this and they go, I don't know what that is. I tell them, take their fingers and run it down in here. You can feel it. We can go almost all the way to the board by just running our fingers. And where you can run your fingers is where you want to separate. Okay, just keep working it. You'll see little connectors. And you can see right in the middle, the eye is starting to come out. You got the eye round, the top round, and bottom round. And what you're just doing is separating that. And also, right down here at the base is a gland. You're going to want to remove that gland. See that little polyp of fat? Mm -hmm. Just want to take your knife. Cut little gland's kind of foul, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's, you know, a lot of people say, oh, when you shoot a deer, you need to go ahead and have those removed, you know, cut them out. If it was going to taint the meat, it lives in the animal. Right. And, uh, you know, it's not something you need to worry about. Burger meat. Run your fingers down there so you can feel it. The eye around in the middle. It becomes real clear once you separate mm -hmm. it with your hand and pull all the, right. the connecting tissue away. I tell people to remove the eye first. That way you can kind of see it better. And we'll set that aside. We'll grind that because that's a very tough muscle. Now, these two pieces are starting to show. We're going to set one aside, work on the other one. You can see what looks like an extra piece of meat here, and it wants to separate on its own if you put your finger under it. You'll see how it just wants to pull away. That's your sirloin. Just open that up. Just kind of trim it, and that'll come right off. And the sirloin's actually very good for steaks. Set that aside. We'll trim that out. Show you that when we're done. Now, this is one of the ham sections most people will actually grind up. It's really good for steaks, and I find it very excellent for jerky, too, if you want to make jerky. And all we're going to do with this is trim up this piece of meat and all these pieces just like we did the back one and everything else. Just barely running our knife under it. You find a piece of silver seam, run it off. And for some reason, I've always found that the fat on the rear end section has a much stronger odor to it. Hmm. I've never tested flavor. <laughs> Just trim that off. Put all that in your burger. Here we go. Make sure you get both sides. If you can see how I'm kind of holding it down to flatten it so I can fillet it. This extra piece up here on top is kind of optional. There we go. So this is good for jerky or hamburger. Mm -hmm. Good for steaks too, actually. These are those basic steaks that, um, that a lot of people will just do the whole ham section, but I found they're pretty good. 
Now you can, like I said, you can choose to go ahead and make that into steaks, or I'm gonna leave this one for roast. Good call. Okay, the larger section, just do it exactly the same way. You'll see when you, when you grab these pieces of meat, a lot of times, um, just if you get confused, get a hold of it and run your fingers into it. You can see this right here, how my finger's going under it, remove it. It's got a little extra piece on it. Got a couple. You can look at it and see this little seam right there. Just run your fingers down in it and go, oh, got to remove that too. You're trying to get each muscle group separated. And your larger ones you're keeping for your steaks or your roasts. Just trim to it. Keep rolling it over. And toward the end of each muscle, you'll find those silver seams are connecting it. They kind of hold them in place. Square up the ends. I'm going to cut this one for steaks. <clears throat> and you see what we've done? We've taken that piece and we've trimmed it completely out until it looks like something that we would find in the grocery. You need a little name tag on your shirt. Bubba. <laughs> okay. Bubba the butcher. butterfly this. Now, you don't have to butterfly. You can cut them in, you know, like the back loin. I've seen people cut them in about two inch lumps, like a filet, and then wrap mm -hmm. them with bacon. That's all it takes. And there you have it. But these steaks are quite nice. Now, how do you rate? Your different mm. meats from them. From if you had to, if you had to rate them from steak wise, I would go from back loin. I would probably go from back loin to sirloin to top round, maybe bottom round, like that, as far as steaks go. And of and course, when you're packaging these things, you put what they are, mm -hmm. how many are in them. What right. year? So, so you don't get confused. If you have a lot of game in your refrigerator, you want to know. Mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll talk about and, that more. When yeah. Okay, now you have your sirloin, and it's a little lump of meat. This was what was at the <coughs> end of your back loin. And as you trim that up, it'll be about the size of a, about the size of your fist. Oh, well, bigger than that. Just trim all the extra undesirables away. And this is actually one of my, I like this piece. I usually just put it on the grill hole. It's a softer piece. One of the way you can, ways you can grade your meat is if you pinch it. What I call the pinch test. Here, I'll show you. Here, pinch that one. Just give it a little squeeze on the back loin, mm -hmm. and then squeeze this one. Mm -hmm. See how it's a little tougher? Yeah. So as you, as you go through your meat, you can tell by the density of the meat kind of how soft and how, how much more uh, appealing it will be. There we go. And that's your sirloin. And a lot of people, I don't, I've never heard of anybody getting the sirloin. <laughs> well, only a couple of people, actually. Right. It seems like they, they usually wind up cutting through it or grinding it. And then you can cut that for steaks, or uh, as I like to do, I just like to cook the whole thing just like that. And you're done. Um, the only thing you have to worry about now, like you said, is uh, wrapping, and we'll show you that here in a sec. You got your bucket of scraps, and you're just, what are you doing here? We're just going through and taking out any lumps of undesirable that we don't want into our grinding meat. Um, yeah, like you, use your best judgment. Nothing you do here is, uh, you know, written down, you can do whatever you want. I look through these pieces. For the grinder, they gotta be long and slender. I like, you know, some people chop them in chunks. 
but I just look through it and see what I like and what I don't. And once you get, uh, once you get it all done, you can season it. A lot of times I'll add seasoning before I grind it. What do you usually put in it for seasoning? Hmm. I just, salt and pepper, garlic. Um, I've had people put some really unusual stuff in it. Uh, liquid smoke, um, stuff like that. But it really is a depending on what do you want. Some people just use it for chili meat mm -hmm. and they'll go ahead and add a bunch of chili powder. Or you can not add anything and do it later. Completely up to you. I like Worcestershire. Do you? Oh, uh, quite a bit. We're going to show you the basics of wrapping uh, meat. Uh, the thing is, this works on a lot of stuff. You can go buy, you know, pork loin at your grocery and do it in this stuff, and it'll keep for a long time. This is basic freezer paper. That's there's nothing special about it. Now the nice thing about doing your meat this way or boneless, what we're doing is we're putting the same pieces of the same cuts in here so we'll know what to label them. I usually put three or four in there. Now, kind of like Christmas wrapping. There's a butcher wrap where you go corner to corner, but we want to get this as tight as possible. That is your whole goal. And since there's no bones, you can do that. Start at the top and just roll it down, get it good and tight. Get you a piece of just plain tape. I like to use extra long pieces to make sure it holds in the fridge. I've never had them come loose. Fold over one end, hold it up good and tight. Fold it over. Now here's the important part. Like toothpaste, start at the end and squish it together. What you're doing is you're getting all that boneless meat is squishing into all the nooks and crannies, which is keeping the air off of the meat. And that's what causes your freezer burn. Once you get it squeezed together, bring the other side up. Done this way, and a freezer set at the proper temperature of around zero to five degrees, it'll last a year easy. I gotta tell you something. I pulled one out the other day. Mm -hmm. I thought I had been Taken off top, I got some from 03. Uh -huh. And it was still good. <laughs> still good, isn't it? It's still good. <laughs> Airtight. And take you a felt tip marker. And I'm going to put on this one, I have a little code I use. I put D for dough. And then my next thing I'll use is 06 for the year. Mm -hmm. And then I'll usually put one. Actually, this is the second dough I've taken this year, so he'll, she'll be two. I know it was a dough taken in 06, and it was the second one I've taken. So now if there's any differences in any of the meat, I know which packages belong to which animal. Now, do you put the cut as well? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> this is top round. Just right top round on there. So to reiterate, you know, mm -hmm. this is something you took in 06, it's the second one, it's top round. You mm -hmm. want to make steaks or whatever, yeah. say, hey, want that right there. Most of mine are wrapped. I used to put, the, if you're uh, curious about how many you put in there, you put four and then, um, you know, steak or roast. But I know now that I do all mine. I usually put four in it and it's done for gotcha. uh, steaks. One other thing is when you take these packages out after they're frozen, when you take them out to defrost them, because this is fresh meat, there will be a lot more blood seepage. So when you defrost them and when you freeze them, put them wrapping up. That will keep anything from seeping out while it's freezing or when it's defrosting. Right. And since this meat's really fresh, a lot of times when I defrost it, I defrost at least a couple days in, uh, in advance. And that's all there is to that. That's, you just do all your meat the same way and you're, you're fine. Let's go over to the grinding. Right. I've got this grinder here. I've had it for a long time. I got it through one of the magazine order places. The only thing about grinding that I can say is that whether you're adding anything to it as far as spices, get a good freezer bag. Doesn't matter what brand but get a good one, it'll make a difference because they bust open, they break open. You'll have more spoilage that way than about anything else. It's not really worth saving a buck when you lose your meat.
Straight into the bag, fresh burger meat. One thing you want to remember is get as much air out as possible. Smash them down and then work the meat into the corners. It's worth it, take a little time because wherever you have extra air pockets, you could have some meat spoilage there from freezer burn. And then zip it up. Dough, 06, two. And we burger know meat. what that is. <laughs> Add burger meat. How about that? Now these are fairly, fairly inexpensive. They are, they've, they've really come down in price. Um, I think that one was about 125 when I bought it. I think they have now for as low as about, I've seen some for about 70 bucks. And these pay for themselves real quick. They do. Uh, you, you know, you don't have to use them just for your game meat. You can use them for, one thing we use is after the holidays, we'll put um, like our leftover turkey meat in there, grind it up, make turkey salad. It's a whole lot easier than chopping it by hand. How about that? <laughs> and that's a whole other show. And it comes with uh, the attachments for, uh, if you want to do sausage, it comes with that. Sam, I tell you what, this has been a blast. I'm going to shake your butcher's hand there. <laughs> thank you, buddy. Remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm Tim Farmer. Hope to see you in the kitchen or in the woods or on the water, wherever. <laughs>